Hi guys. Thank you for taking your lunch hour to come and talk to me. Um, this is a very casual approach. My goal is, um, my focus for 2024 um, is to do education. You know, most a lot of you might have recently heard me speak about just peptides in general um, a month ago. And I'm super excited about it because people talk about how that's the future of medicine. And I disagree. I think it's the now of medicine. Um, and as you know, as I've gone along my 27 years, I hate to even admit that, honestly, uh, that I've been practicing medicine 27 years, but um, I have. And I started when I was, you know, four. And I uh, have learned so much and, and through my years in the emergency department and being very reactive in, in how I managed medicine and heart disease and strokes and arthritis and inflammatory conditions and all the things. Now, I've, you know, over the last 10 to 15 years, I've really been trying to focus on proactive approach to wellness. Mutant. Our current medicine, uh, Western trained medicine, really doesn't deal with wellness. It deals with illness and sickness. And so I'm attacking a much more proactive uh, approach, both in my life and with my patients who I'm super, super invested in. So um, without further ado, I want to talk to you about um, the fountain of youth. And truly, I talk about a magic bullet all the time. For those of you who are my current patients and come to me, I talk about a magic bullet and how, how I uh, love uh, magic bullets. And if I had one magic bullet for um, the fountain of youth, I would have it for me. And uh, then I would also have it for my patients. But, you know, usually when I'm having those conversations, it's usually in the more the aesthetic realm of my business and um, talking about Botox and fillers and skin tightening and all that. But as far as a magical, like magic bullet, one shot approach for the fountain of youth, from a wellness and longevity and vitality point of view, I would tell you that uh, truly this fountain of youth that people talk about, you might've heard about NAD or NAD. I just refuse to call it NAD, I just won't. So I'm gonna call it NAD. Um, and what it stands for is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which for sure no one's using that. So we'll use NAD for purposes of simplicity. And what is NAD? NAD is a, we have it in our bodies. This is why you don't see a lot about it until you go looking for it because big pharma uh, can't patent it. And it's part, it's part of our bodies. Unfortunately, it's just not there as we age as much, but it is an essential molecule that plays vital life-saving roles in in anti-aging at the cellular level. So what does it do? It supports DNA repair mechanisms and energy production. When I was in medical school, I had a huge diagram of something called the Krebs cycle, which I swore in my life after hours of sitting in front of it and staring at it that I would never talk about the Krebs cycle again. I have PTSD over it, but here I am finding myself talking about the Krebs cycle, which is all things energy and healing in the body. It's, it's the way we form ATP, which is energy for our cells and our mitochondria. So as we age, unfortunately, as you know, there's a lot of things that happen and it's not for the faint of heart, but our levels, the very levels of everything energy that we need decrease over time, more than 50%. Why? Which is why it's important to receive treatment and it has to be exogenous treatment because it's no longer in part of our bodies that brings you know the NAD to optimal levels. And you'll hear me as my patient talk about good marriages, optimal marriages, good lab levels, good, what's in the normal range and what's optimal may not be the same thing. So increasing NAD levels have been just completely linked. Many, many, many scientific studies, you know, I'm a science nerd, that have been linked to healthy aging and the prevention of age-related diseases and metabolic disorders like cancers, like heart disease, um, maybe, you know, just on and on and on. You can go ahead, Andrea. Um, so what are eight major benefits of NAD? And truthfully, there's tons, 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 tons. But I can talk to you about anti-aging benefits, um, improved cognitive function. As you guys know, as we age, we get natural psychological and cognitive decline. 
Um, I can talk to you. I'm, I'm going to give you guys a couple of real patient stories. I've got lots and lots. And if you come to me for a consultation, I'm happy to share more with you. But one that comes to mind is a 49 year old female. She came to me with fatigue, brain fog. She was unable to lose these 25 pounds that she had put on with literally out changing her diet. Now, this is somebody who exercised four to five days a week and was gaining 25 pounds. She was obviously, as a result, depressed, having increased anxiety. It was having problems in her relationship. She was having insomnia. Um, after a month of infusions with me, IV infusion, she's already lost 12 pounds. She sleeps eight hours a night. And she describes this to me as life and marriage saving. Um, so that's just, these are, yes, the scientific data is out there. You can find it for sure. Um, so her, I'd put her under, you know, like anti-aging, cognitive function and chronic stress. Having said that, these are real life stories of people I take care of every day. There's tons and tons more evidence online. But the eight major benefits, if you want to talk about it, are improved cognitive function, anti-aging effects. It aids in addiction, recovery and cravings. Um, that was one thing that um, that's kind of how I started getting into this about five years ago. One of uh, there's a woman in I think she's in Kansas and her son died of an opiate uh, overdose. And so she has a full clinic that heals people, uh, gets people off uh, chronic pain medications without putting them on methadone, which I don't know if you know much about that. But that's basically like switching one addiction for another. This actually aids in addiction recovery, but now the studies have been done about alcohol cravings and binge drinking, which my practice is in South Lake, Texas, and there are some South Lakeians who like to drink their wine every day. Um, and so it helps with that as well. It boosts organ function, and by that I mean all organ functions, cardiovascular, hepatocellular, that's your liver, kidney functions, lung functions, skin, organ is our, one of our biggest organs is our skin. So it actually changes skin functions. I've got some amazing patient stories about skin repair. Um, it enhances athletic and physical performance, decreases muscle, muscle recovery time for our gym rats. Um, and I've got some fitness models and just people who are big gym rats who uh, have reported some amazing uh, benefits to using NAD on a regular basis. It boosts immune responses to inflammation. I've got a girl who writes about me. She now lives in Florida. She used to live in Texas. Um, I actually get a lot of patients um, uh, across the United States now that want to talk to me about rheumatoid arthritis um, and uh, just degenerative disease and arthritis in general and how much it's changed their life in, in, with NAD treatments. It uh, helps combat depression and anxiety. You can go on. Um, I wanted to give you guys a couple of tips also because I am proactive about increasing and main maintaining your NAD levels naturally. I'm a, a big fan of intermittent fasting. I feel like that is an old thing. People have just recently been started talking about it in the last three or four years, but it is old, hundreds of years old. There's a doctor by the name of Dr. Uh, Jung, J-U-N-G. He wrote, he's a nephrologist. He wrote the obesity code. Um, he takes care of the sickest of the sick patients, renal failure patients on dialysis. And he has those people eating sometimes three to five times a week. Um, he only eats himself three meals a week, which I think is a little bit excessive and I'm all about moderation. Um, but I do put my patients on intermittent fasting and my best recommendation would be to do an 18-6 or a 16-8. And what that means is that allows your body to be at rest, in particular your pancreas. So um, we can help uh, heal insulin resistance. We have so much insulin resistance and belly fat in this country today. We're the fattest country on the planet. And so what, when I talk about intermittent fasting, I mean, you don't eat for 16 to 18 hours. I eat between the hours of two and eight because that works best for my kids and my clinic practice. Um, but, you know, whether you choose to eat noon to six or whatever, it really allows your pancreas to be put at rest so that your body can, can use your natural fat levels and use that as energy. We need energy. No doubt we do need energy, but it, who doesn't want to burn a little bit of fat? So you're not going to burn fat if you're feeding your body. I remember back in the day, you know, we used to tell people, oh, you got to eat six to eight small meals a day. Well, that's ridiculous. Metabolism doesn't work that way. 
So your breakfast, when you break your fast, can be at noon. It doesn't have to be, can you go back? It doesn't need to be uh, more than that. I'll let you know when I'm zooming forward. Uh, dietary changes, the best way to eat food, and you guys know this, you've heard about the carnivore diet, you've heard about uh, a keto diet, you've heard about raw diet, you've heard about um, what's the 30 day whole and all that. All of that talks about getting rid of vegetable oils, getting rid of fake food, getting rid of, uh, you know, supplemented wheat and grains, especially in our food source today. It's, it's so unhealthy. I mean, there's fake food being sold constantly. And I'm not talking about just going to fast food restaurants. Of course, that's the worst food you could eat. But I'm talking about even in the grocery stores. I read a study recently. If you if you ate one apple in 1987, which my daughter thinks was the dark ages, but actually I was already in college. Um, if you ate one apple at that rate, today you would have to eat seven apples, seven apples to get the same nutritional benefits. Just because our soil is so starved of nutrients and so toxic with all the peptis, peptide, uh, pest, it's not peptides, pesticides that are damaging um, our food source. So the more raw you can eat, the more organic you can eat, the more ketosis, you know, um, good fats, healthy fats. I'm not talking about key, I'm not talking about Atkins of eating bacon all day long, I'm talking about eating, you know, more carnivore type diet, real food, bison, longhorn, things that are lean for you. Um, seeking the heat by that, I mean, not direct sunlight. I mean, heat like sauna exposures, uh, full infrared spectrum sauna is the best hot tubs, uh, heat soaks that increases your heart rate and stroke volume, thereby naturally increasing your NAD uh, levels, limiting direct sun exposure because because obviously that causes photochromic damage and then exercise four to five times a week. OK, you can go, Andrea. So NAD extends our health span and our lifespan because it acts as a cofactor that combines with enzymes in our body to, fa to facilitate these reactions. These are crucial for promoting and preventing the physiological changes that are linked to aging. Now, we all know that aging is not optional, though I would like it to say it is, but I say this all the time. <laughs> Looking your age is optional. Aging is not optional. So what I would tell you is, it's important to do what we can to make sure that our aging is as healthy as we can and we're not being um, bombarded or having obstacles like cancer or uh, metabolic syndrome or heart disease are things that are going to um, hurt us as far as aging goes. That's not natural aging. I can't tell you how many patients come to me and they've told their uh, doctors that they don't feel right. And the doctor draws blood work and says, oh, well, your hormones are fine and you're fine. Well, you're not fine if you're not sleepy. You're not fine if you don't have a decent sex drive. You're not fine if you don't have energy and you feel like you need, you have like a brain crash at four o'clock in the afternoon. You're not fine if you're still working out and gaining 20 pounds. So just because, quote unquote, some of your lab results may be fine, what you need to realize is that fatigue and stuff that you're feeling are, it reflects inward cellular imbalances that are happening in your body. And since we know that natural aging leads to a decline levels of energy, leads to actual motivation declines, that, that those symptoms that we're finding tell you, your body's telling you it's not fine. Um, these reactions are involved in, in energy production, DNA repair, which is cellular uh, healing at the, uh, you know, anti-aging at the cellular level and maintaining the integrity of the cell structure. As we age, these declines contribute to cellular function, and this is what leads to cardiovascular diseases, dementia, Alzheimer, um, strokes, uh, lipid disturbances, metabolic disturbances, insulin resistance, leptin resistance, things that we, we are told by traditional Western trained doctors that are, um, that are normal changes of aging. And, oh, well, you're 45, you just need to deal with it. Listen, I'm a traditionally trained, trained Western doctor. I've made it my life's mission to learn more and to realize that, that looking your age and mitigating these risk factors is not only possible, it's available and easily accessed. You can go on. Okay, so starting at the age of 50, you produce 50% less NAD than in your use. That's half. It actually starts at the age of 29, which is really pathetic, I think. 
Um, and I put this in here and I was like, well, you know, my daughter thinks 50 is so old. Um, and look, I mean, I'm practically elderly. You produce 50% less in AD than in your youth. So I just, that was just a little sad slide for you guys. You can move on, Andrea. Okay, so as we age, the levels decrease. We've talked about this. This is very concerning because there are critical cellular processes that need to occur. Um, especially with as much oxidative stress as we have on our bodies, just even I tell my patients, even sitting here in front of this computer right now, I have sunscreen on my face because the lights in my uh, office and the lights from the computer are damaging my skin. If you don't believe me, start looking at 13 to 18 year olds and you will see something that shocks me. These are teenagers and they already have what's called necklace lines. Necklace lines are those wrinkles that go horizontally across your neck, um, which are shocking to me. Like even when they lift their head up, they are having wrinkles. Why? Because they are phone zombies and because the, the light from the phone is damaging their skin. It's absolutely unbelievable. So, um, I mean, I just thought I would tell you that because take that for a second. Sorry, I just had to take a quick drink. Okay, I was like, if okay. you guys, if you guys have questions or you want me to stop here, if anybody wants to uh, stop me or I'm I'm speaking too fast or you can't hear me, if you could please just let me know and I'll try to, I'll try to uh, accommodate. Are we doing okay? Yeah, we're doing great. If y'all have any questions, put it in the chat as well, and I'll um, throw in the questions in and out of Dr. Strauss's slides. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thanks. So uh, PRP activity, PRP is like a polyribose ADP reaction. Basically, that's a cancer fighting uh, activity that happens. And the thing about, uh, about NAD is that it actually allows something called our telomeres. Telomeres are um, caps on the end of all of our chromosomes that allow you to fight cancer and fight disease, fight infections. Um, you know, when COVID came out, who was dying? Elderly people, obese people. And why is that? That's because our telomeres are shortened as we get older. That's a normal, um, I guess that's a normal result of aging. Not that we have to, because we now know you can take tel telomerase inhibitors, which actually lengthen those caps to fight disease, which is shocking, right? I mean, you can, and that's something that you can actually scientifically measure. I had my telomeres measured about five years ago, and I'm going to go have them measured again. Um, but if you look at the data, you can see if you go every three to five years to have your uh, telomeres measured, it actually allows you to show that you can physically fight infection better than other people. You can physically fight. It's like a, a protection uh, armor against cancer and disease in general. And if you do get sick, you're able to fight it. That's what PRP activity is. And then the reduction in NAD levels in human tissue can be shown. The correlation between these levels and aging strengthens the idea that NAD has a role to play in cellular death. Senescence means death um, and the hallmarks of aging. So you can see here as the age significantly drops off, even you can see 39 starting up as we get older in both males and females. Go ahead. Okay, so this just echoes what I've already talked about, cellular death, mitochondrial dysfunction, genomic instability is the DNA repair. That is for all the things we talked about, it's cognitive decline, skin skin laxity skin uh damage inflammation uh inflammation is like the new term like you know there's come some terms up in in the recent years like a karen and facebooking and googling that were never words before inflammation is uh immune response and chronic inflammation both in your skin as an outward appearance of how people look and also chronic inflammation inside we've never seen more autoimmune disease and more chronic inflammation in the last three years 
Um, and you guys can put that, you know, uh, think about what's happened in the last three years to our country, that chronic inflammation, chronic autoimmune disease, super cancer, super tumors. Like I believe we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg to what's coming. And so I am very much, as I told you in the beginning of this lecture, uh, into and dedicating my life to proactive response. I mean, I've got my kids on things that my parents, though good parents, were, I mean, they didn't have access to this and they didn't know about these things. So I am super hopeful that my three-year-old and 14-year-old that are taking, um, you know, medications to prevent illness, that are taking um, supplements to, you know, uh, make sure their body is able to fight disease and able to keep their telomere length, their intracellular, you know, aging at bay. I mean, clearly I need to be taking it triple time, but they're taking it too. Go ahead. So PRP activity decreases in line with the decrease in uh, NAD levels. And, the, and this PRP, like I told you, is the poly, poly uh, ADP ribose reactions that fight cancer and cognitive decline. So much of what we talk about in cognitive decline, like just normally our brain slows down with age. And we search, we lean towards comfort, right? Like I think about those cryo baths and, you know, dipping in the cold baths. As we get older, we we go for comfort. There's a guy by the name of Gary Brecka. He's like a guru in anti-aging. And he talks about every day doing a cryo bath and, you know, jumping in the cold water and all the things. He's like, as we age, we we try to lean towards comfort, but actually that's, you know, I think it's good to do that, but also we need to be doing something to protect our telomeres and protect our NAD levels so that it continues to fight against cancer and neurodegenerative disorders. Um, obesity also causes damage. As I told you, we're the fattest country on the planet. Even, we even have skinny fat people. Um, I'm a big semaglutide, terzipatide proponent and I've got patients that have lost a lot of weight but I do it differently than most doctors because losing weight in and of itself is not necessarily healthier if you don't lose fat and maintain muscle mass you are still damaging yourself at the cellular level and you are no more healthy than when you were 180 190 pounds 200 pounds so it's important to know that we can now do things to prevent cancer. We can do things to prevent neurogenitive disease um, and we can make ourselves healthier easily. There's been many studies that suggest optimal NAD levels lower the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Um, focus, brain clarity, brain function, concentration, uh, brain energy, uh, memory, um, even ADHD. I mean, can I tell you how many patients are addicted to Adderall and are addicted to Vyvanse and all these stimulants, which, you know, my daughter has ADD. I've clearly got ADHD, if you know me. Um, and we, neither one of us take any of those stimulants. It changed my daughter's personality. It does not work for her. And you know what? Make lists and do other things. Take NAD, protect your cognitive health, because once you don't have brain health, it's the saddest thing. And the most wealthy people on the planet will, you know, spend all of their money to get their health back. But it, I feel like our message needs to get out there of protecting what you have, because it's the saddest thing for my friends and my family that have had to live with people who have Alzheimer's and live with people who have dementia. You know, I'll tell you, one of my best friends, her mother has a uh, horrible dementia and she did everything in her lifetime that was right. She was 68 years old running. She was a psychologist working 40 hours a week with a full book um, into her 70, 72, um, got married when she was 70, doing great. And now she is so demented that she doesn't know her daughter's name. And that is just tragic to me. It's tragic because we can promote healthy cellular function. We can pr promote neuroplasticity, which is the healing of the brain and the prevention of disease now. And we, we just couldn't before. We didn't know about that. So it's super, super, super important. Go ahead. As I told you, everything um, NAD in general in our lives 
from helps generate ATP, which is the primary source of energy for all cells. And it acts as an electron carrier, it acts as a, as a messenger, if you will, sh shuttling these electrons from one molecule to another. And by facilitating this process, it has a significant impact on the amount of energy, ATP is energy, available for intracellular processes. So this is how it works for skin rejuvenation, anti-aging, muscle recovery, uh, fat loss, aptosis, which is eating of the fat cells. And by supplementing to this, supplementing these levels to achieve optimal levels, the body can actually prioritize anti-aging cellular function instead of just trying to be reactive like, oh gosh, we're sick. Oh gosh, we got cancer. Oh gosh, we got heart blockage. Like it can actually prioritize anti-aging, so healthy cellular functions if you are giving your body NAD. Um, so this, it obviously we've talked about this, but there are scientific studies um, talking about the positive impact it has on muscle recovery after exercise because again, energy production, but also it reduces oxidative stress on our body. And by increasing these levels, it can support the demands of your muscle cells and reduce the damaging effects of free radicals. Free radicals are everything in our environment, lights, uh, uh, air, air lines, cellular phones, all of the radiation that causes inflammation and damage to our muscle tissue and to our organs and to our brain. It actually supports helps reduce this oxidative stress and also i'm sure you guys have read the effects of stress on our body i mean especially in the last three to four years that i mean i hear about all the time increased stress that people are under and just how much it affects people's lives but we know that stress causes heart disease we know that stress causes uh, cognitive decline we know that stress causes weight gain in weird places I mean, how many people do I hear talk about cortisol and adrenal fatigue and belly fat and back fat and shoulder fat, like all, uh, and uh, breast fat, like all of that is inflammation and adrenal fatigue due to stress. And you can make this better. Um, you can make this better by um, something called sirtuin. Sirtuin is, um, these are enzymes that play a role. Uh, uh, activity in weight loss and metabolism. Um, NAD also uh, regulates something called aponectin, which increases your metabolism. And so when you boost these NAD levels and you enhance sirtuins in your body, you have protection against metabolic disorders, such as metabolic uh, syndrome, which is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, belly fat, and prediabetes, and then also metabolic disorders that are type 2 diabetes and also autoimmune disorders like thyroid. How many people have thyroid disease? I mean, probably 50% of the people aren't even diagnosed that have it. You can go on. Um, I mentioned this before, NAD levels not only decline with age, but also due to obesity. And that's just the fake food, the supplemented grains, the white rice, the bread, the tortillas, especially in Texas, there's nothing better on the planet than uh, Mexican food. And I grew up in a strict Italian Catholic household where we had to eat all of our pasta on our plate. So then we could have all of our dessert. And that's why we all suffer from way too much weight in this country. Metabolic performances, um, you know, and this is just about essential nutrients and enabling it allows, if you have NAD, it allows your body to more efficiently burn your calories so that you can shed excess weight and feel more energized. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that I'm a doctor that doesn't believe in exercise to the contrary, but I'm saying that it helps your body to be a more efficient machine, giving your body optimal levels of NAD, sirtuins and aponectin, which all increase your metabolism and helps you by breaking down fats, processing carbohydrates that you do eat and metabolizing amino acids. Um, so more energy is available for metabolic, metabolic processes. We know this because the studies are out there. We know that NAD, you know, can do, it's the wonder drug for anti-aging. We know that it helps 
as far as anti-aging go, you can study it, it. Studies have shown that IV infusion therapy um, and sub Q subsequent sub Q uh, shots um, actually slows down and even reduces aging. So it's a powerful antioxidant. Um, it helps with um, neurocognitive function. We've talked about that in diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, ALS, NAD levels have been shown to be reduced and that there's also an increased level of toxic substances that get cleaned out. Um, we talked about addiction recovery. It's a potent adjunct during addiction recovery for um, wanting cravings for binge eating, for alcohol, for sugar addiction, for alcohol addiction. Um, it's NAD levels in the body are important for the proper functioning of heart and help the heart recover from injuries. So if you've had strokes or you have heart attacks, or if you're like me and you have heart disease in your family, it's been shown that it improves cardiac dysfunction in a diseased heart, prevents heart disease. It also boosts renal and skeletal muscle functioning. Renal is kidneys, um, chronic stress. ATP is our cellular currency, the money that we use in our body. And it's, uh, it's the form that we use to be able to utilize our energy. It's an, NAD is an important component in this pathway so that when you get IV and sub-Q NAD administration, it op optimizes the energy levels. Um, in, enhancing athletic performance, physical fitness, energy levels, allows athletes and exercisers to enhance performance in training so that you get better bang for your buck when you're at the gym or with your retrainer. Um, immune responses to inflammation, to both toxins, to stress, to infections, to proteins, to spike proteins, to chronic viruses, EBV viruses, um, shingles viruses that, are, that lay dormant in our body. Autoimmune disease like arthritis, fibromyalgia, managing pain from these conditions by actually re re, uh, reversing this. Combating depression and anxiety. It has been shown in patients who have a lot of anxiety and have a lot of uh, depression that if you look in their brain, they actually have decreased NAD, which is causing disturbances in their mood. So it's been shown, NAD treatments have been shown to boost neurotransmitters which are substances that are found that in our in our heads, in our brains, that are important for brain cells. And they are act as precursors to mediate the inflammatory response of this. So you can get NAD treatments, which will boost mood, reverse the severe, sim uh, severe symptoms, um, promoting uh, skin rejuvenation. Thank uh, you guys. Please call the office. My staff is super helpful. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm taking your lunch hour to be with me and I'm going to start offering these more often. Um, I can't tell you thank you enough. Sorry that my camera wasn't working, um, but it, it's all fine. It's all good. Okay. All right. Well, everybody have a fantastic day and we will be sending emails and texts out. In the Live next long, happy and healthy. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you. Bye.